when you open this database, you will be asked what is your username. I made that admin, the administrator. If you have either the username or the password wrong, it will throw you out. Then it gives you a list, if you are the administrator, who else is allowed to log in to your database. You can add new users. As if you are the administrator, you can delete a user. And it tells you later on if you ever need to do this without opening the database, use Control shift u First of all, how come that it automatically enters? That is done in a macro auto-executable. That's how you have to name it. So I'm going to show you what is in there. It says uh, run a code. You had done that with uh, a function name. And that is a visual basic code block db open close parentheses. Don't forget to open and close the parentheses. When you save this as an auto execute cute file it will automatically open when you open the database then the shortcut that is done with a macro that has to be called auto keys and you have to add a sub macro in there and the sub macro has the shortcut the caret stands for control the plus stands for shift and the u for u then you do again the action run code and Again, that runs a VBA code that is called authorizing, open close parentheses, save it as an auto keys one. So let's go to the VBA code. It starts with a module, insert a module, okay. and then we use a type declaration private type and I call it user and user has three fields in it name as a string password as a string authorized by as a string and then we are going to declare an array that I called array typed user don't forget the open closing parentheses for it is going to be an array and declare it of the type user this is the type user So that means it has three properties in it. Then we also declare as user. We do that before any subroutine or function. So that means it is accessible to all subroutines and functions below it. Then I told you how we create that auto keys macro. And the auto keys macros run the code authorizing. That has to be a function. And we declare it of the type boolean. That means it's either true or false. Then declare a few more variables. We are going to run the subroutine loading, which I will show you soon. Then I ask through an input box, what is your username? I typed already in the default section admin, so I don't have to type that all the time. Store that in as user. Ask also the password. I typed already word secret, but you don't really want to do that. Then we are going to run from zero, from the first element, to the last indexed element in the array. And that is found by u-bound. So it goes from zero to at this point one, and then two, three, four. If that name is as user, you see that it says dot name, because that was in the type. And if the password is as pass, then we say authorizing equals true, otherwise it stays false and we exit the 4. If authorizing is false, then we are going to shut the database, do command quit. So without the correct password and user, you cannot open this database. Else, if as user is admin, then we give you a listing of all the people who are authorized otherwise we won't show that then we say do you want to add a new user everyone can do that once they are logged in if you only want that for as user then say if as user then etc then we use the subroutine adding which we will see soon and otherwise deleting and then we tell what the shortcut is then the function loading we get the settings from before that we have stored 
we, I will show you later how. In the current project with the name it has, then we store it in the section users, I call it users, under the name count. Get that setting from the previous setting when you opened and closed the database, store it in S settings. If S settings is empty or zero, then set the array back to zero element. And the zero is element, give it the name, admin, password, authorized by self. Otherwise, we redim the array to S settings, but don't forget to convert it into an integer. For S settings can be 1, 2, 3, 4. For i equals 0, 0 is element, to C integer S settings. Get the name from current project name in the section users, then name and the number i, password and the number i, authorized by and the number i. And it does that for all the users that you want to enforce. Next i and if and function, then the subroutine listing. We are going to list all the users and their passwords. Remember we did that only for the admin user. So we are going to use uBound again with array type user i, 0 and then 1, 2, 3. Store in S display what you had already in S display, which is nothing in the first loop. i, that's the, the number we are going to sign, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, with a tab. Then the name of array type user i, VB tab, the password, authorized by, and a carriage return at the end. And then we are going to display that in a message box. Okay. Then the next step, we are going to add one. Redim preserve, don't forget the word preserve, otherwise it empties whatever is already in there. And we go to the array, we take the last element, U-bound array type, plus one. We want one more element in the array. We store in I index the U-bound number of array type user that we have now, that was plus one. Then asked what is the new username with an input box, store it in the name property, what is the new password and authorized by, and by default we use as user, which was declared way on top. Then we show the listing again, that was the previous sub. Then we say do you want to save it, and if they say yes we are going to save it. I will go going to show you how we save all of that. If you want to delete things, Store in I out which number to delete. I do by default one, not zero, for that is the admin probably. But you could do that if you want to. And then in I total I store the last index number of the array. If I out is less than I total, then we have to loop through all the, the other elements and put them back in the previous one. So we loop from I out to I total minus one. Store in the i element the next element. So, and we do that up to the next to last one. And then the last one we have to delete, of course. We do that anyway, even if you want to do the last one, we read them, preserve, but now to i total minus one. So we lose the last one. And we had moved that last one, if you had chosen the previous one, in there. If the message box then is, then save. So now the question is, what is saving? Saving is the opposite of what we did before. We used the get setting. Now we are going to use the save setting. First of all, we are going to save the setting of how many elements do we have. Or in other words, what is the last index number? Current project dot name in the section users under the name count, we store i total. Then we loop from zero to i total, and we store in there, in the save settings, under in the section users, under the name of and then the i number, the authorized by, the name and the i number, and the pass and the i number. Then 
we run this when the database opens with an auto execute macro. I explained that already. That has to be a function. Block the database and we just run authorizing. Authorizing makes sure that you qualify to see all of that. You probably think, yeah, if, you, if someone is smart, they are just going to look in VBA code what the, all the functions are and what the passwords are, etc. So you have to hide your VBA code. How do you do that? You go to Tools, Erase Properties, Erase is the section we have. Go to Protection, Lock this project for viewing. I'm not doing it now. Type your password there, that is completely independent of all the other passwords, whatever your password is, confirm the password, so now only you know how to get back in the VBA code. I'm cancelling all of this. So now, when I close this database, and I open it again, it will automatically ask me. If I don't type this correctly, it will throw me out, it will close the database. I, I hope you believe me. It shows me because I am the admin, what I have so far. I'm going to add a new user, John XYZ, none. So now John is in the list. Are we going to save this one? If you don't save it, it will not be saved for the next session. Yes. You want to delete the user? Let's say no. Okay. So now when you use Control shift u for instance, you will see if you are authorized that John is in there. I'm going to delete him to show you that that works. I'm not going to add a new user. Delete one user, yes. And he had the number two. Okay it. Delete number two, yes. Is he gone? Admin, okay, okay. And John is gone. Again, if you close everything now, you will see that everything has been saved. I'm sure you believe me.